On July 21, 1969, the world was glued to their television sets to witness the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. But as important as the feat was, those images were considered blurry, undefined, and of poor quality by today's standards. Consequently, in the early 2000s, NASA set out to recover the original tapes that were initially recorded from the spaceflight's slow-scan TV telecast on telemetry data tape. The multi-year investigation gave way to many hypotheses, but the mystery of the missing tapes might have finally been resolved. A Global Broadcast On July 21, 1969, at 2.56 Universal Time, mankind witnessed the first moon landing, with American astronaut Neil Armstrong becoming the first man to set foot on the lunar surface, followed by Buzz Aldrin only 19 minutes later. To receive the images recorded from the Apollo 11 using the limited radio bandwidth available, the transmission had to be multiplexed with other communication and telemetry channels, and then beamed from the Eagle Lunar Module back to the planet. The data was then sent to three ground stations, Goldstone in California and Honeysuckle Creek and Parks in Australia. These ground stations recorded the data on special 1-inch 14-track tapes. The Apollo 11 TV camera recorded the video footage in monochrome, slow-scan television RAW format, or SSTV, at 10 frames per second and with 320 resolution lines progressively scanned. However, this specific format was incompatible for direct broadcast on a standard television, and thus the video had to be converted. NASA's ground stations received the signal and converted it into the NTSC television format in real time. They then uplinked the signal via satellite, which was later downlinked by the Manned Space Flight Center in Houston. The entire world was then able to watch the broadcast, which the announcers enthusiastically proclaimed to be, quote, live from the moon. This broadcast signal was recorded in many videotapes and kinescope films as a backup. But during the following years, NASA didn't specifically protect those hard-to-read tapes, as the converted version had been widely broadcasted and readily available, including recorded material from a 10-inch high-quality monitor. Unfortunately, the conversion process had lowered the quality of the footage, diminishing its sharpness, exposure, contrast, and detail. A Long Quest The tapes with NTSC television format that the world witnessed that summer were substantially degraded from the original images. The highest quality signal, launched from the Apollo 11 touchdown zone in the Sea of Tranquility, was transmitted from an antenna mounted atop the Eagle lunar lander and subsequently recorded on telemetric tapes at the three tracking stations on the planet. In 2006, news emerged that over 700 boxes of magnetic tapes, including those with the original recordings of the Apollo 11 program, were missing, and a search operation was launched led by NASA engineer Dick Navsker. The focus was on finding the original SSTV transmission tapes. The search was also sparked by several still photographs that appeared in the late 1990s that were visually superior to any of the video footage available. And the key reason to find the missing tapes was that higher resolution images would be helpful in the ongoing Constellation project, which shared many of the original Apollo program's tasks. If copies of the original transmission were found, the footage could be significantly improved with modern digital technology, making better quality images than those from the scan conversion and giving the world a better view of the events of 1969. A small group of Australian and American NASA veterans conducted a thorough investigation and followed the paper trail, also interviewing anyone from management to storage that could have valuable information. John Sarkisian, an operations scientist involved in the search, stated, quote, I would simply like to clarify that the tapes are not lost as such, which implies that they were badly handled, misplaced, and are now gone forever. That is not the case. He then explained that the tapes were appropriately archived in the mid-1970s and emphasized that they were stored at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, although they didn't know where exactly. Several NASA facilities were thoroughly revised, but it was discovered that hundreds of boxes of Apollo-era magnetic tapes were indeed shipped to Goddard. Furthermore, the Goddard Center's Data Evolution Laboratory was about to be closed in October of 2006, and those facilities held the only known equipment capable of reading the missing tapes should they turn up. Luckily, the equipment was saved. Meanwhile, Sarkeesian also attempted to lower the expectations regarding the tape's quality. He claimed that although they were undoubtedly better than the versions available, the film quality in the late 1960s should not be compared to high-quality video from the new millennium. As the months and even years went by, there was no trace of the missing records, and it became apparent that their role was merely to provide a backup in case of a glitch or outage. As the transmission had gone smoothly and the conversion process was successful, there was no need for the telemetry recordings and these were soon forgotten. Philip Stook, a professor at the University of Western Ontario's Department of Geography, said that, quote, 
there's a lot of old data that we don't seem to have. I think more Apollo-era science data is missing too. He then added that the deterioration of the old tapes was a genuine concern and that Russia was having the same problem. Quote, Migration of data to new media is essential in digital archiving, and it's an ongoing problem. I work with people in Moscow who are trying to recover old lunar data. The team of retired NASA employees assigned to finding the missing tapes was ultimately unable to locate them. After an exhaustive three-year search, it was concluded in 2009 that the tapes were most probably erased and reused in the early 1980s for NASA's Landsat program, which faced a severe data tape shortage and used old tapes to record massive amounts of data transmitted by the new satellites. NASA engineer Dick Navsger disclosed the disappointing findings, quote, I don't think anyone in the NASA organization did anything wrong. I think it slipped through the cracks, and nobody's happy about it. New findings. However, not everything was lost. Lowry Digital, a film company in Burbank, California, was hired to restore the available materials for the 40th anniversary of the moon landing. And even though the original images had not been found, the public did get to see a better quality version of the landmark event. Then, in 2019, three two-inch videotape reels were located because of a Sotheby's auction in New York. The company claimed that they were, quote, the best surviving NASA videotape recordings of the historic Apollo 11 moon landing, and the earliest, sharpest, and most accurate surviving video images of man's first steps on the moon. Gary George, a 65-year-old retired NASA employee, had bought the tapes at a government surplus auction in 1976 for only $218. George explained that he sold several tapes to television stations for recycling. Fortunately, his father spotted three tapes labeled Apollo 11 and told him to hold on to them. The three tapes contain over three hours of original materials, although NASA claims that they are not the missing one-inch telemetry data tapes. Still, the images depict Buzz Aldrin walking in lunar gravity, the deployment of the U.S. flag on the lunar surface, the long-distance call with President Richard Nixon, and the unforgettable words of Neil Armstrong. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And just in time for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 feat, they were sold for $2.18 million to an undisclosed buyer. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the like button if you enjoy our content. And let us know in the comments below if you want us to address a specific topic on your mind.